Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live here in the IBM booth at Mobile World Congress. I can feel the excitement. I Hopefully, you can hear the excitement. And I have to tell you what, 2023 MWC is a big year, a lot bigger than 22, and a lot bigger than 21 because it didn't even happen. So here we are. It's got the energy of 2019, but four years of innovation packed in, which is, is great to see. And I hope people can hear, but I hope they don't hear too much. Because exactly. in the end, I hope our guests can hear us and we can hear us. But yeah, exactly. it's a, it, it is great to be here, Pat, and it's been a, a great day so far. A lot of really interesting interviews, and we got one more here. And, and by the way, it's been a lot of fun having interviews where we've had customers with the vendors. Exactly. Because it really helps tell another level of sort of insight and truth about what's going on. Because of course the vendors are going to say everything they're doing is <laughs> terrific. But when the customers come on and say it, it tends to be more believable, and it tends to be built with a lot of proof and, and, and experience. Yeah. Well, with that said, introduce our guests, Luke from Vodafone, Lori from IBM Consulting. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Yeah, Very yeah. Good. Been, a, been a long day so far, but all good stuff. Luke, you're the grand purifier here, right? It's <laughs> like, like, like Daniel said, like the difference between pundits, we think we know what we're talking about, vendors make claims, but you're here to be the truth teller of the whole thing. So thank you for coming on the yeah, show. Yeah, very welcome. I'm pressure yeah. is on. Yeah. Pressure is on. No pressure. So why don't you both do quick introductions and give us just a little bit about your background and your role and uh, Lori, ladies first. Thank you. So Lori Thorpe, uh, I am part of IBM Consulting and I lead the portfolio for Telco Transformation. I'm Luke Hibbertson. I lead the group research and development team worldwide for Vodafone, which is a fantastic job that I'm very pleased to be uh, left to, left alone to do, basically. It's no, fantastic. that's great. So what we're here to talk about, hopefully it's not a surprise to you, is uh, Quantum Safe uh, for Telco. Uh, both of our respective companies have quantum computing practices, but uh, we want to take a, a more definitive slice of that for creating a quantum safe telco. And, and first off, let's. what is the state uh, of, of the industry uh, right now? Lori, I'll kick it off with you. So uh, NIST has been uh, very busy over the last few years in um, selecting algorithms. So that we can see, we can look at that as a little bit of a, of a starting point in terms of the standardization. Um, and last year they selected the initial four algorithms that, that will be going to, to standardization. Um, I think one interesting thing you mentioned is quantum safe for telco. So there's a quantum safe piece which is obviously not specific to telco. The work that we're doing is um, how do we then apply it to telco and in particular what, yeah. what is it that the operators are going to need, what do we need from the supply chain um, and, and how does that work its way throughout the, the wider ecosystem. So there is um, that, that basically is, is the work that we're doing from a quantum safe for telco perspective. Excellent. Give, give a little background on what that actually is. Though. What is quantum safe photography? So, so I guess we can start with saying um, what is a quantum computer today? So we don't have quantum computers that can currently crack the, the ciphers and the codes and the security that they put around customer data and how we operate networks. However, quantum computers are expected to be able to crack the security that, that we use today in a few years time. Don't ask me when it's going to be because nobody yeah. knows. I just do know that there are a heap load of bright people working on this. Um, good companies like IBM are hitting That's the roadmap right. in terms of the, the machinery. What we need to start doing though is adopting a new way of protecting the data that we believe is going to be resistant um, to quantum attack in the future. And the reason why we need to do it now is because people are already harvesting data in anticipation of being able to decrypt it. So it doesn't matter if they're not actually here yet, the data can be stored and decrypted later. So well, the, we want to get ahead of that. Well, the good news is, and this doesn't always happen, is you have the industry getting ahead of what it knows will, could, would and could likely be a very big, big issue. But I'm curious though, what is the overall impact of these quantum computers to uh, the security of, of telcos? Maybe I'll start, start with you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, cryptography as we know it is compromised. Um, so 
uh, public key cryptography that is compromised if you start looking at where that is used in telco systems you can see that it impacts um, all different levels of the stack so um, and and this is really part of the of the work that we're doing which is really understanding uh, what is going to be vulnerable what needs right. to be fixed in what order how do you prioritize so there's the, the inventory piece becomes very critical because even though we may not need to fix it today, what we want to do is we want to prepare. We want to make sure that we are as prepared as we can be. And to Luke's point around the standards, obviously from a telco, um, the way that the telco industry works, we have standards that need to be defined, that need to be implemented in the products, um, and those timelines, there it doesn't happen overnight. So that, that preparation piece is really critical. Right. And maybe I can just build on that very quickly. Please. Taking it back to, um, to the telco piece, and Laurie mentioned the need to build a crypto inventory. So understanding where vulnerable forms of cryptography are used in the myriad of IT business systems, and the systems you use to protect customer data, we need to understand where that cryptography is being used. We need to do a risk assessment so that we can plan to switch out those algorithms, right. the ones that have been developed, as Laurie mentioned at the beginning, by NIST, that are thought to be quantum safe. Now, is this status quo for telcos, meaning getting ahead of something before it hits? Or is this something that's, that's new and a little bit unprecedented? I mean, I've been, in, I guess, in the industry a long time, uh, I, I haven't seen this much getting ahead of it. Maybe, you know, 512, 256 bit encryption, right? When we had the ability to crack 8 bit. But uh, the question is this something new? It's not new. Um, it is something, there, versions of this have happened in the past. Right. Um, there's often there's a comparison with Y2K, um, and they call it, I've heard it called. Uh, Q2, Q2K, yeah. Yeah. Um, except we don't know when the 2K date is, is going to hit. Um, so no, I don't think it's necessarily anything new, but I think one thing that, that I, I believe is improving from a telco perspective is maybe a better appreciation of the need for preparation. Right. Um, and, and obviously security is really high on everybody's agenda. So this isn't something that we want to leave um, leave until until it's it is too late. Um, the other thing to to your point, we're not just looking at post quantum. It's it's about crypto agility. So actually, there is an intermediate step where we we create the 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 environment where post quantum cryptography can be implemented in an easier way than maybe is, is possible today. So um, a lot of the work that, that we're looking at, it's, it's a journey towards post-quantum, right. but along the way you've got the crypto agility piece, which is really what's going to enable that um, going forward. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of the risks are shared with some of the other regulated industries that are going to be facing similar issues as quantum cryptography continues to move forward and security analysts and the CISOs have a new set of challenges in front of them. Um, it'd be kind of interesting though, getting ahead sounds really, really positive. Of course, there's a lot of expense. Not knowing when it's going to come to fruition means you're spending kind of in advance of maybe getting benefit. Can you kind of give me a little bit of a risk reward of, of taking this action and being so on? I'm going to drink it because it's actually, it's not um, spending more, it's actually spending correctly, spending wisely. So we're trying yeah. to future-proof investments and making sure that the equipment we procure, which quite often can be, can be at the um, there's natural refresh cycle, we want to make sure that that security gateway, for example, or ENOB, which is the, the thing that powers a, a radio tower, we want that equipment to have the capability to be um, using quantum safe crypto algorithms. And so and it's, it's it's all about planning, to be honest, yeah. knowing where, what to do first so that you're ready to And if I can wait, because I, I, when I said expense, obviously security has always been one of those things that's been a bit of a balance for companies, you know, where they're sort of like spend now and we, you know, it's kind of like because you know you're going to get hacked at some point or wait, you know, where, you know, even at the board level, it's kind of been like, should we spend more? 
Um, and, and then until you get hacked and you see all the value that your company can lose uh, through you know having a, an incident, and then you go, we literally should have spent more sooner. So it makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, that balance has always been out there where security is one of those people. There's no difference when you're the business for it's the way you decide yeah. to place, place your bets. Protecting customer data, continuing to protect customer data is fundamental to our existence as a mobile network operator. Likewise, making sure that our network infrastructure can't be hacked and, uh, right. and switched off or operated by the wrong by the wrong people is um, is fundamental to our uh, to our future. And and it is about taking uh, a measured approach. So this isn't about creating unnecessary panic or going right. too early. It is about creating a measured approach. And and this is something that has been you know we're highlighting um, because it is risk based and. You know, and we want things to be done at the right times. So, for example, one of the things that that has been discussed at length is around whether we need to, whether the standards are coming too late, or whether the uh, we should be looking at, at pre-standards. There right. isn't. I, I would say there isn't necessarily a case for looking at pre-standards, but there is a case for preparing. Yeah. We should also say something about the fact that there is a, a, a good side to this as well. You know, the quantum computers are do bring a lot of opportunities, not just about risk. It's just inconvenient that they happen to be able to solve the mathematical problems that underpin a lot, a lot of cryptography. And they're but, very good at that. They're very actually, good at that. but uh, also good of, at other things as right, well. So, right. <laughs> we're looking at the, at the plus sides in, within the telco industry as well as the, the need to protect against the risk. Yeah. So uh, I'd love to wrap up this segment talking about a special quantum uh, telecom security task force that both companies are on. Can, can you share uh, what what the goal of the task force is and what individual roles your two companies play? So the Post Quantum Telco Network Task Force, it was established um, back in September last year. Uh, it was initiated by IBM and Vodafone. Um, okay. We we have been working with the GSMA because we felt there, there was a need for an industry level initiative. Um, since then, we have been working uh, with the wider the wider ecosystem. Right. We've had huge traction with the task force, so we have over 35 uh, members, of which um, I think 13 or 14 are uh, large global operators, um, including including Vodafone, obviously. Right. The task force has started with an impact assessment. So we last week we published um, a white paper, an impact assessment white paper. This was work that we did in collaboration within the task force and um, and I mean IBM and Vodafone have been leading this so we we chair I'm I'm the chair Luke is okay. the vice chair of the of, of the task Wonderful. force however there's been huge collaboration yes. and participate active participation from from the other members of the task yeah. force yeah and um, I think I think we've built a really good level of consensus so that we've we've able to raise awareness of the risk not cause panic but at the right. same time set out some very um, practical steps as to what we should be doing as an industry um, more globally and also as individual operators so we very pleased actually just early this weekend we got the mandate to continue with this group for GSMA right um, so we're going to be rolling out uh, the next phase of this of this task force and we welcome everybody to join us. Well, the industry service. appreciates your leadership. I mean, somebody has to go first and put resources in. And quite frankly, I couldn't think of uh, two amazing companies to do it. I know everything that what IBM is doing on the quantum side, and it is one of the leaders, I can make the argument, the leader right now uh, with, uh, with, with what it's doing. And Vodafone, with its leadership opportunities, uh, you guys are out ahead of a lot of folks as well. So it sounds like a marriage made in heaven. And, and here we go. So I want to thank you both for coming on the show. And we'd love to do a follow up with you maybe next year to hear more about uh, as, as it becomes more uh, reality and, and to fruition. So thank you Absolutely. so much. Thank Very you. Good. Brilliant. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, there you have it. We are here in the booth at IBM at Mobile World Congress 2023. Thanks for signing in. We will be back with more videos, so hit that subscribe button. 
We always love our fans. For Patrick, for myself, for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. See y'all later.